Hey, what's up? It's Jack, and today I'm going to explain my former world record in solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded in 16.22 seconds at five different levels of difficulty. So, um, yeah, let's dive right into it. So, uh, starting off, as you probably know, the objective of solving Rubik's Cube is to get from this to this. So, just getting the same color on all six sides, pretty much. But another way to look at it is that you need to put each of these 20 pieces back to where they belong. So there are 12 edge pieces and uh, this is one uh, with blue and red on it. And in order to solve this piece, you'd have to put it between the well, blue and red center pieces. And same deal with the corners, which have three colors on them. There are eight of them. Um, this is the red, yellow, green piece. So I'm pretty sure you can guess where that's meant to go. And uh, yeah, um, when we have, uh, memorize a cube um, before solving it blindfolded, um, yeah, obviously we have to memorize everything from its current state, like before we do any turns. So uh, we have to use a special method that only moves around a couple of pieces at a time so we can actually keep track of things. Um, if we memorize like, I don't know, every single turn and all the colors that run along with it like that, then that's like, like hell no. So yeah, since we're solving, I guess, more on a piece by piece basis, that means we have to memorize uh, 20 bits of information because of the 20 pieces there are on the cube. So that's about two mobile phone numbers worth of information, but like even that's still probably a fair amount because I actually only know my own mobile phone number, I don't remember anyone else's. So what we do is like encode it into something a bit more meaningful. So I have like letters assigned to each of the stickers on the pieces. Um, so uh, this is my world record scramble and my memorization for that looks like this. So yeah, um, just a bunch of letters. Of course, like that's still kind of meaningless. So what I actually did was pair them up and make words out of them. So in the case of the world records, lamb, flower, bop. Um, as you might have noticed, I already had six letters instead of eight representing the, uh, the eight corners, which is what we usually have on average, but um, I got a bit lucky, so. A mixture of the fact that I only have to memorize 20 bits of information, uh, represented by amount of pieces on the cube, roughly. Moving around a couple pieces at a time only so I can actually keep track of things, encoding it into something meaningful, and also just got a bit lucky. So um, most likely, um, if you know how to solve the cube, uh, you use a layer by layer method. Um, but doing such a thing for blindfold solving is like pretty difficult. Like even for like baking the cross, which is most likely the first step you use to make to solve the cube. Uh, I have trouble like I guess ma making that like blindfolded or like without looking, which might sound kind of strange because I like, do the whole cube in like 16 seconds. But it's a different method pretty much. So this is a different ball game altogether. So yeah, for blindfold solving, uh, like I said before, uh, we solve just a few pieces at a time. And yeah, through the halfway points, it'll probably look like this because um, I solved the edges first and then I solved the corners. Um, and each of the algorithms uh, cycles around three corners at a time. So for example, for the lamb, um, it'd uh, deal with these three corners and yeah, the yeah, are pretty quick. Um, probably like less than a second on average. And you yeah, had to do uh, eight of them. Uh, because there were eight pairs of letters, so each of the algorithms deals with one of them. And uh, yeah, that resulted in the execution phase, or the actual solving part of the solve, uh, taking about eight seconds. And this is where I should clarify something as well. Um, for normal side solving, uh, you just start the timer as soon as you start solving the cube, obviously. But for blindfolded solving, the memorization part is counted as well. Um, so in the actual solve, it took me about seven and a half seconds to memorize a cube and about eight and a half to actually solve it. Uh, some other things to observe, I guess, are that I don't really have to pause anywhere to like recognize cases, uh, like you generally have to do for side solving, because um, I've kind of memorized everything already, so I just have to just algorithm execute the algorithms like as quick as possible, pretty much. Also, I generally don't really rotate that much. So yeah, um, in the world record, as I normally do, um, I start off by memorizing the corners, so uh, lamb, flower, bop, just make words out of them pretty much. I know um, a bunch of blinders uh, use images or maybe even stories uh, for the long term memo, but um, I don't really have time to make, I guess, vivid images or stories, so I just kind of leave them at kind of vague words and I hope I remember them later on. Um, then for the edges, I use um, audio pairs or sounds, so uh, door, yicks, wipe, bots, dip. It's so generally stick around a vowel in the middle and just make some kind of sound. I'm gonna execute in reverse order, reason being is that um, sounds are a bit more short term than stuff like uh, words, or images. Um, so execute the edges, then execute the corners. 
And in terms of the execution method, I use a method called freestyle, uh, which cycles around three pieces at a time, one including the buffer, so it solves a layer pair with each arc pretty much. Um, unlike old Pokemon, which just solves one, le one layer at a time rather than two. So, um, for example, for the lamb, uh, old Pokemon would kind of look like that. But for freestyle, it'd just be this. So it's quite a bit faster. So you also have to like think ahead quite a bit faster as well, or else you wind up pausing and stuff, which can be very time consuming. It's like the equivalent of like look ahead, where like inside solving, you look ahead to the next F12 pair and perhaps even some last layer cases to avoid the whole pausing thing. Um, yeah, in a high level of uh, free blind, you can't really afford the pause at all. Um, so look ahead, think ahead in the case of blind solving is pretty important. Also, um, yeah, uh, at the highest level, uh, you don't like review at all. Usually, I guess blind solvers tend to review the memo, go over it a few times, make sure it's like really solid and stuck in the head. Um, yeah, where I'm at, I just kind of run through it once and just hope I remember it pretty much. So for methods like old Pokemon and M2, you're kind of restricted to using a certain buffer. For example, for corners for old Pokemon, you kind of have to use a UBL uh, or a sticker on the piece of UBL. Um, but for freestyle, you can kind of use like whatever the hell you want pretty much. Uh, but top blind is generally agreed that uh, UF and UFR are the best buffers, reason being because they have the best commutators, or the algorithms that swap around three pieces at a time. So yeah, that's those were the buffers I used in the world record solve. So every algorithm that I use um, involves uh, these pieces here. And um, yeah, speaking of the methods uh, which I use in so freestyle, um, I can sort of give you a bit of a brief breakdown of how commutators work, which kind of constitute all freestyle. So if you use M2, uh, just shoot to this target here, like how you normally would. And just do another M2 at the end. And yeah, that's a commutator pretty much. So what you just did just then without uh, maybe realizing it was um, inserting this piece in here uh, in free moves. So insertions are usually free moves um, in a change, which was the M2. So that was one move and just undoing them both. So undoing the insertion and the interchange. You can also do it in uh, the inverse as well. So M2, which is the interchange, uh, the insertion and undoing them both. Another example, which was in the world record solve was uh, the flower. So in this case, it had a setup, which was just a rotation. So Z, um, usually it's actually moves in the setup, but um, this is just a rotation because I just like it. Um, Interchange first in this case, insertion, undo interchange, undo insertion, undo setup. So that's the general gist of how commutators work. So yeah, in terms of the hardware, I use a Ganyar SM. It's not really the most popular option, uh, especially amongst the top line solvers. I think uh, there's a bit of a divide between magnets and non-magnets as well, which I don't think is really a thing in the side of solving community. I just like magnets because they're more stable. Um, I also chose to use the Ganyar SM because it's generally a stable cube, so I guess it favors stability. But I know a lot of top liners use like Moe cubes or generally favor Moe cubes. Uh, also, some other optimizations I did. Um, one was uh, the way in which I tilted my head to the side a little bit when lifting up the cover. Um, reason being is that I think it lets me see the cube earlier, so I know. Um, which orientation I have to be in uh, earlier, or which the way in which I have to rotate in order to set up my orientation earlier. Um, don't think it really makes much of a difference, um, but even if it only makes like, I don't know, a couple milliseconds difference, um, that's kind of all I really need. Uh, same with the nod done, using my head to nod down the cube. Once again, probably only saves a very small amount of time, but um, everything kind of counts in the end, doesn't it? So yeah, I'm just going to walk you through the solve now, pretty much. So starting here, LM, so lamb, FW, so flower. But I, I kind of just think flower for just one syllable because I think it might be just a bit faster. Then I can just hear B, um, that's my buffer piece. And I kind of realize I have a corner twist here and that one's solved there. Um, I memorize the UD sticker of the uh, piece, so P. And I kind of just think BP, so just bop. Um, I, don't, I just kind of join these and make a letter pair out of it and just kind of remember that there's actually like uh, just a target and a corner twist. Um, so moving on to edges, um, I use the UF and UR uh, swap because I detected I have parity. So starting here, DR, door, YX, YX, WP, wipe. And because the UF UR swap, um, I pretend that's actually B, so BT, so bat, or bot, I actually forgot which one it was. And 
Yeah, so this is now my new buffer piece. And also, uh, I learned this trick from Jaden McNeil back in like a 2016 floating tutorial, floating buffer tutorial of his, but um, once you hit um, eight targets and you land right on your buffer sticker, that means that if there's another um, cycle somewhere in the cube, then it has to be one you can float on for sure. Um, also, I know I have an even number of edges because I always have an even number of edges based on how parity works. So I just looked down here and, and I saw there was a new cycle. I was like, oh shoot, hell yeah. Um, so I just checked that one to there and that went to there. So, um, yeah, start off uh, just an X away from my orientation. Uh, pretending that's like my new UF for one health pretty much. Um, it happened to be an 8 mover, so that was really nice. Uh, rotated back and did the rest. So, DR is a UI prime setup into Purecom. And YX is just straight up Purecom, nothing special. WP, so that's just a M prime setup. BT, so M setup. And just kind of pinky drag here. Middle finger pull down. It's pretty fancy. Uh, R, M prime kind of casual at the end. Corners, LM, so that's just RU pretty much. Standard stuff. Next is FW, uh, this is how I rotate for. Um, but it's a pure come otherwise. And yeah, for this, uh, normally what you do is just kind of break it through the uh, corner twist. So just kind of do BP and the parity out for it, perhaps. It's a bit of a lock up. But um, yeah, I just happened to know a uh, LTC DK, which is a subset I made like back in like 2017. Um, so the case for it was for this. So uh, B and H of the corner twist. Um, so I just did a DT set up to that and did the out that I memorized for that and just DT to do it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure I only saved like a couple of milliseconds at best, but uh, once again, maybe the stuff just adds up. Um, yeah. I was fortunate enough to just happen to have that case that I knew and I broke the world record. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and most importantly learned something from this. Um, hoping everyone can learn how blindfolded, how blindfolded uh, Rubik's Cube solving can work to some extent. Uh, be sure to share this with a friend that knows how it works or doesn't at all, um, just so they could maybe learn a bit more about blindfold solving, hopefully. And uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content related to blindfolded cubing. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, catch you later.